Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth and final video on making a quiz game in Unity. So it's already come time to wrap up this short series. It's been a lot of fun and I've showed you pretty much what I wanted uh, to show you from the beginning. However, there's still lots of stuff you can do to improve this game on your own. The first thing that comes to mind for me is maybe adding some audio to the game. So if that's something you're interested in, I really suggest you check out the 2D platformer course, which has a cool couple of videos on making an audio manager and adding some sounds to it and making them play. So uh, if, if that's something you're interested in, interested in uh, definitely check that out. So in this video, we're going to be uh, building a cool icon for the game. We're quickly be going to be hopping into uh, Photoshop and sketching it out. However, you can use whatever program you want to. And then we're going to set up some basic uh, player settings. And I'm going to show you how to quickly build this as a standalone for either Windows and Mac. If you want to uh, go more in depth uh, on how to publish your game, stuff like um, turning it into a uh, setup file that you will run and then it installs on the computer and you have the ability to uninstall and all that. Or if you want to publish it to the internet and maybe upload it and all that stuff. Um, well, then I really suggest you check out video 25 to 26 in the Mega Game course, uh, where I cover a lot of that stuff. I really also want to make some uh, uh, standalone videos on how to export and some good techniques and all that. So if that's something you want to see, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll have a look at, at creating some very uh, generalized uh, videos on that topic. So that would be super fun. Without further ado, let's just dig right into today's video. So you can see that I am uh, here on my desktop and let's just open up Unity uh, point 5.3.5, which is the um, version I'm going to be using today. So I've updated a bit uh, since we started. And uh, the first thing that I want to do here is uh, maybe just clean up our project a little bit. So let's just right click here and go on the create folder and uh, make a folder for our scripts. Let's select the game manager and the question and drag them under there. And let's also make another folder and this is going to be our sprites folder. And whoops, our sprites folder and this is pretty much only going to host our, our game icon. Then we can go under our main uh, scene here just to make sure that everything looks and plays as it should. And we can just hit play here and see that everything is working. So that's perfect. And uh, the first thing that I want to do is go under the edit project settings and then player. And uh, this allows us to change all kind of stuff uh, for how we export the game. So the first uh, thing we are able to do is change the company name. And I'm going to change that to Brackies. Then we can also select the product name and I'm going to write, write quiz game example here. Uh, the default icon, we're going to be making that in a second. And then you can see I have three different tabs here. You might only have two, you might have five or six. It depends on how many modules you install when you install Unity. So uh, before Unity basically came with a lot of different opportunities for exporting your game. However, the new way they're doing is it doing it is they have modulized uh, how exporting works. So when you install Unity, you get to choose what platforms you will be able to build for. And I've chosen that I want to be able to build for standalone, WebGL, Web Player, and uh, then of course for um, uh, under the standalone for both PC and Mac. Uh, but if you haven't chosen this and uh, haven't checked these boxes, you can just rerun the installer and install them uh, this time. So I really suggest you do that. Uh, those are the basic platforms that you almost always want to have. So um, if you don't see your tabs here, that is why you can just rerun the installer. So next up, we have the resolution options. I don't want the default to be full screen. Instead, I want this to have some kind of um, fairly small window. It's a very casual game we've made here. And so I don't want to clutter the entire screen with it. It's, it should only take up as much space as necessary. And therefore, I'm going to set the default width to something like 650 and the default screen height to something like 550. So it will almost be a square, it will be a bit wider and it won't take up too much space. 
Then next up, um, we have the ability to display a resolution dialog when we uh, run the game. That will allow the user to change input, choose the right resolution, and change the quality settings of the game. That's not something I want the user to decide. We've decided that beforehand, so I'm just going to uh, be disabling that. You can also, of course, turn this into a resizable window. That's probably going to work fine with our game because of the way we have set up the UI, but I'm, again, not going to allow the user to do that. Then we can uh, override some settings for the standalone uh, when it comes to the icon. We are not going to be doing that. We are not going to be changing the splash image either or any of the other settings. Then we can move on to the web player under resolution and presentation. Uh, you can select a template here and a width and height. I'm just going to leave all of this be and the same with the WebGL, just to leave all of these settings. So uh, cool. Now we can go ahead and maybe create an icon. So uh, I'm going to again be using uh, Photoshop. That is my default um, uh, uh, image editor uh, of choice. However, you can pretty much use anything. Uh, a very good free alternative is GIMP uh, and that's going to work just fine. Uh, and this is not a Photoshop tutorial. This is just showing you uh, kind of how I sketch out my icons. And I'm also going to be uh, making this available to you. If you want to use this, that's fine. Uh, it will be uh, available to you, even though uh, also for commercial use and all that. So um, first off, let's make a new uh, file by pressing Control N or Command N. And this is going to be the uh, quiz game icon. And I'm going to uh, make it 1080 by 1080 pixels, so completely square. And let's uh, double click on the background here to choose a new name for it. I'm going to choose a BG. Then we can uh, go over here under our uh, shapes tool and uh, click and hold to select the rounded rectangle tool. And uh, then we want to set the radius to 100 pixels. Then I want to drag from one corner to the other and uh, what we can do is then hit Control T and then we can make sure that this is accurate by snapping the sides here uh, to the actual sides of the canvas. This will just make sure that we don't have any uh, overlapping or missing an edge or something like that. Then we can disable our background and we can choose another color for this. And I want this to be a very uh, light red, very similar to the one that we have chosen inside of Unity. Cool, then I want to uh, duplicate this layer by pressing Control J and then press Control T to scale this. Hold uh, or drag from the corner, hold down Alt and Shift to scale uniformly and from the center. And uh, then we can just release that, something like that. And we can now make this a blue color instead, some kind of light blue, almost uh, watery. And now you can see we have a border and we have some kind of uh, background image. And uh, to give this a bit more depth, I'm going to add a shadow from the border onto the background, but I want, don't want a shadow around the border. So what we're going to uh, be doing is right or double clicking on uh, the blue image and then choosing an inner shadow. And then we can just uh, scale this up a bit. And you can see that that gives us some nice depth very easily. We're also going to be adding gradient to this. And I want to change this to overlay so we can still see the blue color. And then uh, just simply uh, bump down the opacity a bit so it's not too much. That looks very nice. And then we can take our uh, border here, double click on that as well, and maybe add a bit of a gradient to this as well. So again, I'm going to be changing this to overlay. Uh, actually, let's do a soft light and uh, bump down the opacity quite a bit on this one. I don't want it to be too apparent. Cool, so now we have uh, this cool uh, icon field, then we can add some kind of um, content to this, some, something that stands out in the middle. And uh, here I want to add some kind of question mark uh, because it is a quiz game that we are making and therefore I think it makes sense to make a question mark. So uh, I'm going to press T to uh, bring up our text control here. And uh, I don't want to click inside of this because you can see that there is a circle around my cursor and that means that it will format the text to stay inside of these. And that's not something I want. So I'm just going to press out here where it's a square. I'm simply going to make a question mark and you can see it before I drag it in here. I'm going to move this on top of all of the other layers so we can see it clearly. And you can see the font I'm using here is Myriad Pro and I want the bold typeface. You can use any form you uh, or any um, font you want. And uh, then we can press Ctrl T, scale this up again, Alt Shift. 
uh, something like that. To center this, we can press Control and then select the uh, rounded rectangle over here. So that will select that area. And then we can uh, choose our question mark. And then we can go under Layer, Align Layers to Selection, and then choose Vertical Centers. And then again, Layer, Align Layers to Selection, Horizontal Centers. So that will center our uh, question mark on this layer. And that's perfect. Then we can double click this question mark and let's first give it a color overlay and select the red color over here. That's going to be fine. Then let's give it a uh, shadow, so a drop shadow. Uh, a, widen the size a bit and maybe give it a bit of distance to offset the uh, shadow. Then we can go under bevel and emboss and we can maybe drag down the shadow mode's opacity to zero and then just bump up the size. So that will just make uh, light fall upon the um, question mark to make it stand out a bit. And we can also add a quick inner glow to make it really pop. So we'll uh, make this fairly large. Let's make it red and then a very light red and then maybe bump down the opacity a bit. So if I turn that on and off, you can see it really makes the icon stand out. Good, so that's pretty much all I wanted to do for this icon. It's not the prettiest in the world. You can definitely do more and you should definitely spend more time than me on this. Uh, but uh, I think it will do for now. So let's press Control S to save this. Let's save it under our quiz game assets sprites. And I'm just going to save it as a Photoshop file. If you're using GIMP or something else, you should uh, save it as a PNG file because that is pretty much lossless. So let's save that, hit OK. And uh, let's uh, head back into Unity, go under Sprites and you can see it's now appeared here. And let's just change this to true color and leave everything else as is. Then hit apply and that should work just fine. Good. So what we can then do is go under edit, project settings and then player. And we will lock the inspector here, go back under uh, the sprites and drag the quiz game icon under the default icon. And that will now be used for when we export the game. So that is something we are now ready to do. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Let's go under file, build settings. And you can see that I have currently uh, selected the WebGL platform. However, I want to export to the PC. So in order to change this, I need to select the PC and we want this Unity icon to switch over to the PC. We do that by hitting the switch platform. Unity will reconfigure the project. This might take a long time if you have a lot of assets, but if, we, uh, if you don't, which we don't, you can see it's almost instant. So it's switch over now and this button is now grayed out. That means that Unity's editor is now configured to work as if it was uh, playing on a PC. Good. And uh, then we can choose the target platform form. We're going to select uh, Windows. You can of course select Mac OS X. And again, if you don't see the Mac OS X here on the Windows platform, rerun the installer and make sure to choose the module. Good. And the architecture, uh, 86 means 32 bit and 86 64 means 64 bit. All computers run 32 bit. Some only some computers run 64. However, in modern ages, if your computer is uh, less than uh, five years old, there's a really good chance that it runs 64 bit. However, for a simple game like this, the architecture is not going to make much of a difference and every run can run 32. So if you don't want to uh, wor worry about this, just choose 86 and be done with it. That's fine for our case and that's what we're going to be uh, doing. And then before we build, we want to make sure that the scenes in build include our current scene. So if it's not there, drag it in or add the open scenes. Then let's hit build. Let's go under quiz game. Let's add a new folder called builds. Let's double click that. Let's add another folder and we'll call this Windows. Double click on that and then we can make a file name and this is going to be the quiz game example. And then I'm going to just indicate that this is 32 bit. Let's save that. And Unity is going to build this. It's going to do that fairly quickly because again, we don't have many assets and it's going to open up the Windows folder. So you can see here on the build windows, we now have all of this uh, different content. And this has the exe file, it has some debug files and it has a data folder with all of the um, resources needed by the exe file to run the game. You need to include 
all of this stuff when you share it with your friends. So simply take this entire folder and you can compress it to a zip file and send it over. If you want to deploy the game, I recommend creating a setup file that you run that installs all of this on the computer and maybe uh, adds a uh, shortcut to the desktop and to the start menu and an all uninstall feature. Again, if you want to see all of that along with exporting to the web, check out make a game video number 25 and 26 on the subject. So uh, without further ado, let's try and boot up our new game here and see it opens up this window and that is actually not the correct resolution. That is not what I wanted. I think this is too large. But however, we can just check this out. So you can see if I hit true here, it is indeed working. So let's just go ahead and find our edit project settings player here. And I don't believe that this is the default. And I think the reason why it's not using the uh, default is uh, before I ran the game, uh, when I was testing out with a different uh, default screen width and height, and I think that it saved that locally. But if you run this on your computer, it should be much smaller. So uh, just keep that in mind. These are only the default screen and width, uh, and uh, they can be a bit annoying in Windows. So that's be, uh, that's why Windows remembered that I ran it in that resolution, and so it did that again. You can of course refresh that. Uh, there are plenty of uh, stuff written about this on the internet. So that is exporting your game to uh, Windows. That is kind of wrapping it up and all of the different player settings and stuff like that. I really hope that you enjoyed this series. I really want to do more kind of smaller series to show you different concepts of what it's like making different games. I think spending a lot of time on one series is great, and I definitely want to keep doing that as well, uh, but it, it kind of... Uh, you kind of get stuck on maybe uh, some very specific uh, things and, and, and you don't have uh, time to cover the very wide concept of game development. So I think uh, if you want to see more of these short series, definitely let me know. I really want to make more for you. So uh, that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in some of the other courses. Okay.